JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week June the 20th until June the 24th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFD and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, we don't have any central bank deciding on monetary policy this week, but that is far from suggesting a quiet week. Actually, it looks equally important as the last one. So let's take things from the beginning and we start from today's events. There are no top tier data on the economic agenda, but there is an event that could attract a decent amount of attention. And that's the testimony of ECB president Christine Lagarde before excuse me, before uh, the European uh, Parliament. Um, at its latest gathering, the ECB kept all three of its main interest rates untouched, but signaled it would, um, it would hike uh, rates next month, followed by a perhaps bigger increase in September. This added credence to the view of those seeing a 75 basis points increase by September, as it could mean a quarter point hike in July and doubling that in September. However, Langarde and her colleagues failed to provide details on how they are planning to address the problem of, fragment, or the problem of uh, fragmentation, which refers to the divergence in the economic state and especially borrowing costs between different Eurozone countries, something that raised concerns uh, among the financial community. The bank held an ad hoc uh, meeting last week saying that it would direct cash to more in-depth nations from debt maturing and that they would uh, work on a new instrument to prevent an excessive divergence in, in borrowing costs. However, ECB President Christine Lagarde said that the ECB's job is taming inflation and not helping budgets. So, having uh, just a parenthesis here, remember that initially on the announcement of the ad hoc uh, meeting, the euro strengthened, but at, uh, when President Lagarde delivered those comments, the euro came back under selling interest. So having all that in mind, we expect Lagarde to confirm market expectations with regards to the path of interest rates for the summer, but we are very eager to hear uh, remarks, any remarks related to fragmentation. Will she show more sympathy this time around with regards to the periphery or will she stick to her guns that inflation is the bank's top priority and not helping budgets? In our view, the first scenario may allow the euro to continue the recovery started today morning, while the second one could invite the bears back into the action. Now, the preliminary PMI is due out on Thursday could also affect uh, the Euro's future course of action as they will provide an early sign on how the economy has been faring during the month of June. Although the market can handle a small slowdown due to the uncertainty surrounding the war in Ukraine, uh, as due to that uncertainty, a small slowdown may be largely priced in, but a large a larger uh, than expected decline could come as a disappointment and market participants may scale back their high bets, which could result in a weaker euro. Uh, summarizing all this, we see the risks are tilted to downside. Although we saw some recovery, it could continue. Maybe Vlangarta Pia shows more sympathy today, but if, she's, if, she, if she reiterates uh, her view, the euro could come under selling interest and could continue lower on Thursday when we get the preliminary PMS. Especially again, the US dollar, uh, if, we concede, if we take into account that the Fed uh, has been the most 
hawkish central bank among the major ones. Remember that last week the Fed hiked interest rates by 75 basis points and the dot plot uh, almost uh, matched uh, or at least let's say satisfied uh, the market uh, pricing. Now let's go to Tuesday. On Tuesday, investors' attention is likely to travel to Australia, where we have the RBA, meet, uh, the RBA meeting minutes and the speech by RBA Governor Law. At its, at its latest meeting, the RBA decided to lift interest rates by 50 basis points to 0.85% against the consensus of a 25 basis points hike. Also noting that inflation is expected to increase further and that they will take further steps in normalizing monetary uh, conditions. So we had a uh, hoggish RBA last time and since then market participants have lifted their bets with regards to the RBA's future course of action with the ASX 30-day interbank cash rate futures yield curve suggesting another 12, yes 12, quarter point increases by the end of the year. In our view, the minutes will reflect the hoggish vibe we got from the meeting statements, so investors and traders may focus more on lows, uh, on, lows uh, on governor lows, more up-to-date remarks. If he signals that they are willing to take more bold steps in curbing uh, surging inflation, the Aussie is likely to gain. However, we don't expect this currency to see a long-lasting recovery. Why? Due to its risk linked status, expectations over further aggressive tightening around the globe and increasing fears over recessions could weigh on the broader market sentiment and bring uh, that commodity linked or risk linked currency back under selling interest. So the OZ could benefit from expectations over aggressive tightening by the RBA itself, but the whole globe now uh, is uh, afraid of recessions, we have high inflation, most major central banks are tightening very fast, this uh, enhances concerns over recessions and it's a circle and this weighs on the broader market sentiment, um, which could have a negative effect on uh, the Aussie, which uh, is a traditional risk linked currency. Later in the day, we get Canada's retail sales for April with expectations pointing to a decent slowdown in both headline and core terms. However, following a hoggish Bank of Canada uh, at uh, its latest gathering, we don't believe that retail sales could prove a game changer with regards to monetary policy. Investors may, pe may prefer to pay more attention to the Canadian CPI data due out on, uh, on Wednesday. Now, on Wednesday, ahead of Canada's CPIs, we get the UK CPIs for May. The headline rate is expected to have ticked up to 9.1% year-over-year from 9%, but the core one is expected to have slipped to 6% year-over-year from 6.2%. So, inflation at 9.1% in the UK at a time when the Bank of England has, said, has been long having a target of 2%. Now, last week, uh, the Bank of England hiked interest rates by 25 basis points, as this as was widely anticipated, and this enhanced the notion that it will follow a slower rate hike path than most other major central banks. Remember, we have we had the Fed hiking by 75 basis points. We had the S&P last week surprising markets and hiking by 50 basis points. The Bank of Canada delivered its second. 50 basis points hike uh, last time. Even the RBA hiked by 70, by excuse me, by 50 basis points. So, and 25 basis points nowadays from a central bank is not uh, so hoggish. So, um, the Bank of England, by delivering a quarter point increase last week, enhanced the notion that it will uh, continue at a slower pace than other major central banks. However. Officials, in the statement officials, said that they are ready to act forcefully if deemed necessary, which means that they could deliver larger hikes if deemed necessary, and that resulted in market participants lifting their pricing up. According to the UK overnight index swaps, they now see interest rates near 3% by year end, expecting at least 50 basis points 
at each of the September and October meetings. So with that in mind, accelerating inflation could add credits to that view and may support the pound. However, we, we are reluctant to call for a trend reversal in the pound. Why? The bank itself warned that the economy may have contracted in the second quarter and thus more data revealing an ugly economic picture could prompt market participants to be more cautious to scale back some of their hike bets and something like that could result in another round of selling in the British pound. The PMIs on Thursday may be uh, of those releases. Uh, we will discuss them in a while and uh, if we get large disappointments there, this could enhance fears of recessions, of a recession. It, we also get uh, the UK retail sales data on Friday. Expectations there are for both rates, the headline and the core rates, to fall into the negative territory. Again, another bad economic data point. So uh, if those data reinforce or add to recession fears, they will also prompt participants to scale back some of their hike bets and thereby bring the pound under selling interest. So in such an environment, we are reluctant to call for a trend reversal in the pound, even if the CPIs accelerate and especially against currencies like the US dollar, we explained why dollar has been very strong due to uh, the Fed's uh, hoggish uh, stance. Now, um, after the UK CPI data, during the European afternoon, as we already noted, we have the Canadian CPIs for May. Headline inflation in Canada is expected to have accelerated to 7.5% year over year from 6.8%, but the core rate is anticipated to have declined to 5.4% from 5.7%. Excuse me, from 5 At its latest gathering, the Bank of Canada hiked by 50 basis points, its second uh, double hike in a row, taking its benchmark rate to 1.5%. That said, this was largely anticipated and fully priced in at the time. So in our view, the most important takeaway from that gathering was that the bank reiterated willingness to act more, more forcefully if needed. When you hike by 50, by 50 basis points and say you are willing to act more forcefully if needed, it means that you are willing to even deliver a triple hike like the Fed did last week so, in my humble opinion, the Bank of Canada is the second more hoggish central bank among the majors. First is the Fed, then is the Bank of Canada, in my opinion. And to be honest, uh, that's a very close call. Thus, accelerating inflation could add credits to the Bank of Canada's view of uh, more action and could help the looning gain at the time of the release, even if the core rate declines somewhat. After all, even that rate remains well above the 2% midpoint of the bank's target range of 1% to 3%. Now, later in the day, Fed Chair Powell will deliver his semi-annual testimony before Congress. He will deliver the same testimony on Thursday as well. So we will pay attention on what he has to say on Wednesday. The same testimony will be delivered on Thursday, but that doesn't mean that we will uh, ignore the event because he will take questions and those questions may be different than on Wednesday and he may provide extra hints and clues when answering those questions. Now, last week, in line with market pricing, the Fed raised interest rates by 75 basis points. The new dot plot was also very close to the path priced by the financial community. The median dot for 2022 was at 3.4 percent, up from 1.9 percent, which implies around another 175 basis points by the end of the year. In other words, as the market has been pricing in, another triple hike in July and two more doubles thereafter. However, at the press conference following the decision, Chair Powell said that at the next meeting they may hike either by 50 or 75 basis points, depending on incoming data. In our view, this means that a 75 basis points liftoff is not a done deal 
as the market pricing has been suggesting. Pass with that in mind, we will monitor his testimony for hits and clues as to how likely a 75 basis points lift off is at uh, the July uh, meeting. Now, the dollar could strengthen if he appears more confident on another triple hike, while the opposite may be true if he keeps highlighting the probability that 50 basis points could also be the case. In, a, in my opinion, that's straightforward, but it depends on how clearly he will present a view on that front. Now on Thursday, the spotlight is likely to turn to the preliminary PMIs for June from the Eurozone, the UK and the US. In the Eurozone, both the manufacturing and services PMIs are expected to have declined somewhat, taking the composite index down to 54 from 54.8. As we already noted, we don't expect this to hurt the Euro much, as it may already be large, largely priced in. However, and deeper slide could well prompt Euro traders to adjust their bets with regards to the ECB's future course of action. In the UK, there are no forecasts available for now, but similarly to the Eurozone, decent declines could increase concerns over a recession and thereby prompt participants to price out some Bank of England hikes. The result could be a depreciating pound. Later in the day, in the US, the manufacturing PMI is forecast to have slid fractionally, but the services index is expected to have inched higher. We don't believe that uh, the US indices will attract the same attention as those of the Eurozone and the UK, as USD traders may have their gaze locked on Fed Chair Powell's testimony. Now, on Friday, we get more CPIs for May, this time from Japan. There is no forecast for the national headline rate but the core one is forecast to have held steady at 2.1% year over year. Although this is a tick above the, banks or the Bank of Japan's objective of 2%, it is, still low, it is still the lowest among the major economies and thus we don't believe that it will tempt Bank of Japan policymakers to alter their ultra-loose policy very soon. After all, they kept all their tools unchanged at the last gathering when the core rate was already at 2.1%. Now, a few hours later, we have the UK retail sales uh, for May, with both headline and core monthly rates expected to dive into the negative territory, adding to concerns over the UK economy falling into, uh, into recession. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 8.30 or 9, let's say, AM GMT. So goodbye, have a nice day and a better rest of the week. JFT, just fair and direct.